Hi, my name is Cynthia. Today we're going to be talking about uh, my top 10 tips concerning breeding parrots. I have bred parrots in the past and it's very rewarding but very time consuming. So I guess you have to ask why do you want to do it? I did it because I wanted to try it out and I wanted to sell some of my parrots. Now, it's sometimes it's not really cost effective because you got to give a lot of time to hand feeding them down the road. So it, unless you get good money for them, it's even even money really. But you can make some money if you do it the right way. Now. Why do it again? Because you want to? Or because you want to see what it's like? Or do you want to make money? That's what you got to make a decision about. Now, how do you get started? Well, you got to find a pair of parrots to do this with. Now, you can buy ones that are what's called proven, which meant means that they have in the past had babies, laid eggs and had successful babies. Now you're going to pay some decent money for those. Uh, usually you pay obviously more than if you buy two parrots by themselves. Now if you have two parrots that you want to try and breed, you have to know whether they're the proper sex to do that. So you have to have them sexed. And I have a different tape about how to do that to get DNA test on that. But you need to know which one's a male and which one's a female. The next step you have to do is figure out do they get along. So put them in a cage and see if they get along. Not all parrots do get along, and not all parrots fall in love with each other right away either. You'll be able to tell right away. So put them in the cage and see what happens. Watch them because you don't want them to harm each other if they don't like each other. But if they seem to like each other, they're sitting next to each other, they're preening each other, they're feeding each other, then you got a good pair to go with. Next up, got to figure out, are they in heat? Uh, do they are they ready to be in season to have parrot to lay eggs? You can usually tell by them being aggressive to you. Another thing to point out is you're going to probably lose a pet parrot if you put that parrot into a breeding situation because that parrot now has a significant other and most likely will not want to be around you. Some parrots will be friendly to you even afterwards, but a lot of them won't. They like the other, they like that bird because that's their kind and they want to be with that bird and they've bonded with that bird. So you're most likely going to use your parrot, your pet parrot. So beware of that. If you really uh, love that parrot, I would not put it into a breeding situation. Next step before I actually should have talked about is a cage. You have to have a cage that has holes on this, that usually have little doors that you can open and shut on the side of a cage. Now, the cage should be put into an area that's in the darker side, away from other parrots, because they need to have private time to themselves. Now, some people put them in their basement. Obviously, if you have a nice, clean basement that's warm, not damp that would be a good place to keep them away from other parrots and also away from your family because they need to be alone. Now, you have to have a nest box. Nest box are usually attached to where the holes are in the cage. Now, small parrots like finches and that, you can just hang them on the, clip them on the side of the cage. But if you have a larger parrot, like a cockatiel actually, or even larger, you're going to have to put that nest box near that hole because you need to be able to go in and out of that cage, that nest box, to get the baby somewhere down the road. You also need to be able to check on the parrots, the babies, to see how they're doing. So there are a lot of different nest boxes you can buy for uh, breeding a parrot. There are L-shaped ones, there are square ones. You can get on the internet and figure out which ones you need. You can go into a pet store and they'll help you out with buying those. They can tend to be a little expensive, but uh, you can use them over and over again. What do you put in them? You put in some, I like to use like uh, shredded paper. Some people put uh, corn, 
cobs in there. Uh, you can put all different kinds of stuff in there for them to have the baby sit on and for the mom to sit on there too. Now, you need to clean that once in a while. Um, not until after you pull the babies actually. So be careful uh, that you buy the correct stuff in there because they can make a mess in there. Now the next step to do is watch them. You gotta give them good nutrition, especially the mom. Give her a lot of calcium. You can buy cuddle bones. You can also break the cuddle bones up and put it in the feed because she needs to have strong eggs down the road. Feed them good food. Give them good pellets or seed, whatever you usually feed them, and give them lots of fruits and veggies because they need to be in the top health, especially the mother, because she's going to be feeding those babies. The male is going to be helping the mom most of the time, but you got to be make sure that the mom is the one is in the best of health. Now, when you're picking the parrots, by the way, some parrots are dangerous to breed, especially cockatiels, or cockatoos, I'm sorry. Cockatoos, the males, can be very aggressive to the females. And that's why, in their case, you need to have an L-shaped uh, parrot box, or nest box, so that the female can escape that nest box if the male becomes aggressive. And I would read up very carefully about cockatoos and breeding them before you even think about it. I see many female cockatoos that have been damaged for life because of the damage the male has done to them. They've lost legs, they've lost eyes, and they've even been killed. So if if you're thinking about breeding a parrot, I'd start out with small ones like cockatiels first and uh, then move up to a cockatoo. But even then, you should know what you're doing before you get into breeding a cockatoo. What's the next thing? Once you have the parrot start laying eggs, the, the female I should say, you want to check on that. But you got to be very careful because if you check on that, you can scare off the mom off the eggs. Now, many people don't even let the mom sit on the eggs. They put them in what's called brooder boxes. Brooder boxes are a little more expensive. And if you want to do that, you can do that. You can put them in there and then keep track when they're going to start hatching. But a lot of times the female will do a very good job of laying on the eggs and you can be sure that they will hatch properly. Now you can sometimes open up the nest box and kind of shoo away the female very gently and pull an egg out to see if it's actually been, uh, if it's fertile. And you can use a flashlight to pull, put the flashlight up, up against the egg and see if there's a little embryo in there. If you don't see an embryo, then it's not fertile and they're not doing anything. Sometimes when you first put them together, they don't do any fertile eggs for a while. See, that's the investment you put into these guys. Sometimes they won't do it. But sometimes they'll do it right away and you'll see an embryo in there and you know it's a fertile egg and all you need to do is keep watched time-wise. When they hatch, uh, keep track of that obviously. It usually hatches within three weeks of the time of it being fertile. Sometimes a little bit longer with older birds and you can get online and check out different different genres, genres I'm sorry, genuses to find out how long it takes for each one of them to actually hatch. You'll see little crackings at the top of the eggs and eventually they pop right out. It's kind of cute to watch. And then keep track. You're going to want to pull them down the road anywhere from three to four weeks. And that the reason is you're going to have to hand feed them down the road if you want to have a nice uh, bird to be able to sell. And uh, I'm going to have a different video on hand feeding down the road. So watch that. So they're doing good in there, and then all of a sudden you see that the hat, that it's hatching, 
their little crackling at the top and you know it's time to start watching. Now I did have a pair of birds that actually ate the babies and that was pretty sad and sometimes they do that and uh, you gotta watch and if that does happen you know from then on that you need to pull those eggs right away you don't let them hatch with the baby the mom and dad because one of them is killing the babies who knows why they do it sometimes they're afraid they don't know what that is they're immature they don't know what's going on and I did eventually the parrots did not start eating the babies or killing them they figured it out what's going on and they had good babies but have a brooder available and they can be a little expensive but have one available so that if you need to pull the eggs you have something to put them in to, to hatch the eggs down the road now what else has to be done let me check my notes here I'm sorry Now, you have to hand feed those babies or have somebody else hand feed those babies because you need to have a tame parrot to sell and you need to be able to socialize them. So somewhere down the road, you're going to have to hand feed them. Now, some are not bad to have to do. Obviously, finches, you don't have to hand feed them. But if you have cockatiels, even those little guys, you need to hand feed them and make sure that they are socialized because nobody wants to buy a parrot that's going to bite them. They want one they'll be able to handle and you're going to be able to do that. And again, coming back to the cost, it's going to take a lot of your time because down the road when you're hand feeding them, sometimes you have to do it every two hours. So you have to be around those babies and take the time to hand feed them. So think carefully about whether you really want to do that. Another part of having breeding birds is you got to sell them down the road or find homes for them. And that can be another time-consuming thing. And I was also very careful about who got my parrots. At least I tried to. And uh, so, unless you, you have a mindset, it's a business, you don't really care, you just want to sell your birds, which usually is what happens in a pet store. Uh, they just sell to the first person that comes in the door with money. When they, they usually educate them a little bit, but other than that, they, they're into it for the money. But you as a breeder, maybe you're into it for the money, but most of the time people want to make sure that their little guys that they hand fed and socialized and raised, you want them to go to a good home. So down the road, you're going to spend some time doing that too. Now I hope I've given you some good tips about uh, breeding parrots. Now you can get online and get a lot more information, but these are just my top 10 tips on what I felt was important when I was ha uh, raising and breeding parrots. I bred my cockatiels, I bred my little pirouettes, I bred my uh, pionis, I bred my African greys, and uh, I didn't braid uh, my cockatoo or my amazon, but I was thinking of doing that very carefully, but I stopped because it was hard to find homes because you love those little guys and it's hard to let them go but down the road if you want to be in the business you're going to have to get over that and you will eventually I'm sure well I hope you got some good ideas if you did give me a thumbs up if you want to subscribe to my channel I'm going to have some other videos about hand feeding and selling your parrots and uh, come back and visit with me I'm going to try and have a new video every Tuesday and I hope you enjoyed this Come back and visit with me again, okay? Bye now.